It's coming. Thank you. I found that really fascinating and something that I've um, been involved in and, and understand anyway. But uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask was about adoption. Mm -hmm. um, how does it actually affect an adopted child? Is it mm -hmm. the genetic or... Um, I mean, it kind of go back to nature or nurture, but um, mm -hmm. I think we all know the answer to that one. But I just mm -hmm. wondered how it affected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I work with adoption within the context of trauma, so you know I tend to to see a particular aspect of it. Um, but I think overall, for the adopted child, the fact is that child has biological parents. That child has biological roots, even if they don't know them. On the level of the soul, this is known. And even if the if the person doesn't know, the field knows. And in this sense, um, very often the systemic constellation work can be very comforting for the person to see, ah, oh, yes, there is a mother, there is a father, I do come from that, and I have moved on for other reasons to another family. So it's about honoring the adoptive parents, but never negating one's biological roots. It's a matter of respect. Um, yeah, but again, the way to work with it depends on the context. It can be both. It can be both, and, that, and then it gets complicated because the, the adopted child can get entangled in the adoptive family dynamics. So one has to take some time to unravel what belongs where. And sometimes neither. You know, it's not always uh, a picture of trauma. No, not at all. Yeah. Mm hmm. You. I just wanted to ask, do you know anything about extrauterine children that have been born and which have probably encountered maybe new ways of trauma that we haven't experienced so far because this is a new phenomenon somewhere? Mm -hmm. And the other question is, where does all this um, maybe um, encounter the karmic aspect of it? Thank you. Mm. So, I'm not a theologian. Uh, my understanding from my own experience is the unfinished business of previous generations is passed on and that this is not fair, but it's about balance. So, if, if the unfinished business remains in fixation, this is what creates repetition through... Uh, generations. So what we can do is make sure that we finish all the business that we know that we have so that we don't pass it on to our children. And for those of us who are working with trauma, you can do very good trauma work and you don't get a resolution. It's important to think, aha, maybe I'm working at the wrong level here. That this person may be carrying the symptoms of somebody further back. Okay? In this sense, the person may not even know anything about this person further back that they're entangled with, but the field knows. The field knows everything. And in that sense, again, the constellation work is a tremendous resource. About extrauterine pregnancies, do you mean babies who are outsourced? I don't know anything about that because I haven't worked with it, but I would think for the child that they need to honor everyone who contributed to their coming into life. However, if the ghost in your genes is right, uh, the child will carry memories of the, of the woman who carried it, as well as their own genetic 
components. Um, there's a lot to know about the new reproductive technologies when I mean, we have embryos that are frozen for, uh, with unknown fate. People don't know how many siblings they have. It's, it's getting more complicated and we have to stay up to date. And I think it's also important, you know, in working with these things to reserve judgment, to not come at it from a, I don't like this or this is wrong, but you know, when you're the trauma therapist, you know, your job is, okay, this is, this is what is. Now, how do we find a path to healing? What can we do that could help? And um, there's more to know. There's a lot more to know because reproduction is becoming more and more complex. Yeah. ask you uh, about um, a phenomenon that's supposed to be happening in the future with mm. a very significant date mm -hmm. and that is the 21st of December 2012 which mm. is supposed to be this end of the calendar mm. how far do you think uh, populations are affected by the fact that this is being made uh, into some kind of significant event. Do you think that mm -hmm. it will have an effect? Because it just happens to be my birthday. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, you know, it wasn't, you know, if you study history, if you study history, there was a lot of hysteria and phenomena uh, that went on around um, the changing of the millennium um, in the 10th century and so forth. Then again, we had um, all this uh, anxiety around Y2K, you know, that all the computers were going to collapse and there was going to be worldwide this, and then it turned out to be not that. This is a little bit different. Um, and there are so many various theories about what this date means that I don't think we can know until then. Uh, because we will find out. <laughs> it is an important... It, somehow it's become iconic. And the, why is it iconic? That's the thing to get interested in. And will this change as we get closer to that date? And if it does, why? If it doesn't, why not? I mean, that's how I see it. 